I'm having fun. It's an art form. An original artist with that much love in your heart is an art form. And the reason you know they're an original artist is you don't do anything the same way as somebody else does it. And one of the ways in which I realized that, to say this to everyone here, is when I was thinking about, my mother was a good cook. She went to, to school, not that she didn't already naturally know how to do that, with the, what's called your innate skills, which means they're sort of built in because of the level of intelligence and creativity or creativity and intelligence that you have that drives it. Um, you thrive on being different is really what it is because you know that you're different and you can be different because of how creative you are because you have so much love in your heart that you're doing it with to be that creative. So you're not seeking to copy anything. That's like the worst thing to do. If you're, if you're doing that, you're not an original artist. There has to be something new that's different that somebody else hasn't done before, to something else that already is, if you will, or create something out of whole cloth that you just never thought of or felt in your heart and soul and go, wow, how about this? You know, like a, what they used to call them, a light bulb goes off. Yeah. So I was thinking of... Um, being in the kitchen, because there's a nice kitchen here with a big uh, table in the center next to, um, I'm really, actually, it's a really nice kitchen, but it has, just like a chef's kitchen, it has the cutting board, the table that's in the center, and then the kitchen part where the sink is, comes around it, so that you have easy access, you know, around, like a round table. So I was picturing myself, because I, I know how to use a lot of knives, any chef or butcher, but I'm not a butcher. I don't, I don't kill animals for food. I, I can't do that, even though I've eaten animals that have. But even when I was a child, there were several of us earthy types, if you want to call it that. They had all kinds of labels and names back in the 60s for people that wore flower shirts, wanted to go back to be in spirit with Mother Nature, right? And um, it's, it's like, see you later. We're leaving the Truman Show set going back to be with mother nature okay so interspersed amongst all those people okay was all the all the the psychological operations that were taking place with um mind control mk ultra brainwave technology psychotronic weapons all that stuff all the weapons that they introduce that you're exposed to and when you're exposed to now it, it's trying to alter what it is that you are but you can't alter what love is not when that kind of pipe that's running out yet a monopole that's a made of chip you know i chose to serve forever so that the rest of the universe that knows what light is and tell the source knows who you are okay you're with me forever you're one of mine yes that's like godhead source but for me it's a mother god a god mother they were the one you're one with all creation. You're giving love to all creation. Otherwise, you lose a part of what you are, everything you're giving love to. That's simple. Because they, then you experience a difference between what you are and what you're not, which means you lost a fractal. Now you're aware of it. I'm not supposed to lose that fractal. Not ever. That's right. Because any loss of love, which is what light is, is a loss of we experience in us that is being experienced by somebody else that's been abused or traumatized as a result of weaponized consciousness. Wherever, we, wherever you find it, you become aware of it. The light will become aware of it. No matter what seated race it represents, it doesn't matter. Our antennas will pick it up immediately. That's how sensitive a pure fire is. Any detection anywhere that there's something feeding on it or something's draining. It's like it's like an electrician. The electric department says, Hey, we're losing juice over here. Hey, what are we losing? Something's feeding on us. Okay, well, who, where's the source that's feeding on our sun or a star? Right? Using it as weapons. Or in this case, feeding on other people's batteries. Right? So you know what that is, right? That's an energetic vampire. Yep. So at some point, you got to shut the pipe off. Right? 
So I just saw a little um, blurb that my clan mother, Karen McDonald, put up about going off the grid. So I thought to myself, that's when it came to me, and I thought, well, I know a lot about knives. You give me a knife, I can go live out, and I've been living out in nature all my life. She gives you everything that you need to survive out there, by the way. Look at everything else that survives out there. Okay. <laughs> you think you can't do a better job than a bear or a polar bear, you know, or a bird or anything, everything that out there? I think you're equipped well enough to live out in nature and be one with nature. Right? Come in there in peace. Right? Even the Forest Service, it, I'll, I'll share something with you that just struck me and I thought, wow. I want, they're working for the U.S. Forest Service and they're putting signs up like that? I work for that outfit. So I know that they were in cahoots with using forest fires as a weapon against humanity, right? So here I am up here on the Klamath National Forest, which is in Northern California, right near the, uh, the Oregon border. Beautiful country, not far from Mount Shasta. The Klamath River runs right through it, and it's known as the Klamath Knot, which means you get... Uh, the volcanic and the granite uplift and it spins together and it's got some flowers and forests and meadows uh, they're just beautiful it's like being in the Swiss Alps the Austrian Alps and um, so anyway it's it's it, it's a beautiful place and because of that it's um it's natural to sort of know how to be able to live out there in a place like that when everything is alive and living in nature. You're part of the same alive living in nature and spirit that everything else is out there, right? So it is it is much like the movie Avatar in the sense that you begin to have a communication relationship with everything that is out there. Deer will come around you. You can roll around in the bushes with lions and tigers. Okay, uh, it's it's like having a relationship with everything that's out there, or you're able to read it. They read you. They realize the energy you come in there with. They know. Oh, they know your energy absolutely. They will feel how pure the love is in your heart. They will feel it through their heart. They will feel that energy. They know that energy. Okay. And so that's much like that old movie with Dr. Doolittle. Ever see Dr. Doolittle? When everything that was alive in nature, much or t Tarzan. Remember Tarzan and Jane? Yeah. So he could communicate everything that was out in nature. So if there was ever a threat to the natural order of things, which is sort of comes nature because go with the flow, right? Nature knows how to take care of nature because that's the energy that is intelligent and creative like a goddess. Right? Where things just naturally take care of themselves. So in other words, you don't have to worry about nothing. Okay? When you are what love is, you're experiencing love everywhere you go when you're in nature because your energy is the one that's putting that energy into that field, into that nature. So everywhere that you're going, you're experiencing what love is in nature. And nature is experiencing what you are, which is the same thing in the mirror. So it's like nature loves you too because it means you come into a girl's garden and you're not going to do the girl's garden any harm because you realize, my God, I'm in the Garden of Eden. What an honor to be in a mother's garden. So you kiss the flowers or just let the flowers know, thank you for being here. We love you too. Giving love to the flowers. That's why I fell in love with the island of uh, Kau AI. <laughs> Her essence, I feel Mama's essence there the strongest I do than any, any, and that would be natural on that island, wouldn't it? I call that a goddess flower shop. That is a goddess flower shop. So all I got to do is go over there and see Captain Cook with a statue and my man go, man. Somebody's got to boot that pirate out of there, right? Take that thing down. That thing does not belong there. That represents disease, okay? We're not disease states of mind. A pirate is a disease state of mind because it's weaponized consciousness. That's why they raise the black flag. Skull and bones, right? 
same thing as the Nazi death camp. We represent death spirals, man. Death stars. Sith Lord type of crap. Star Wars, right? Man, some big ass pipelines of light gotta come in there and go, warrior. The law showed up. <laughs> Marshall Dillon. 